To think that Adult Swim has had so many strange and bizarre shows that it makes a show like The Oblongs look normal. The Oblongs is a show about your average deformed family and their day-to-day -day life in a literal toxic waste dump. Originally, the show aired on the WB network, but it just couldn't find an audience. It wasn't until the show aired on Adult Swim that the show found some success. One reason for why the show may have had some trouble finding an audience at first was probably due to the show's cynical nature. Sure, there have been plenty of cartoons that had dark comedy, but The Oblongs is on a whole other level than those shows. The very concept of this show is a very cynical view of social stratification, which will be the main focus of this review as we will be reviewing the episode Disfigured Debbie. This was the original series finale of the WB Network run, though when it switched over to Cartoon Network, they aired five other episodes that had been completed but never aired. So without further ado, let's get started. The episode begins with the class showing their family history projects. One of the popular girls in school, Debbie, announces a fundraiser so that the students can get cable in the students' lounge. Our main character, Milo, complains about the fact that none of the Valley kids get to use the students' lounge. And, of course, his argument is ignored simply because he's a valley kid. We cut to a family dinner as Milo's father gives him advice about how to handle the injustice in society. Son, don't rock the boat. The only way we ever achieve change is by doing absolutely nothing over a long period of time. That aside, Bob is actually an amazing father figure. In fact, I would go on to say that Bob is one of the best dads in animation. Bob was born without arms or legs, yet he goes above and beyond to support his family from working his job to spending time with them at home. It's rare to find a cartoon father who isn't harmfully dumb or who actually cares for their kids to the point that he won't hurt them for the sake of comedy. Not to mention he's voiced by Will Ferrell, which is an added bonus. Getting back on track, Milo decides to enter the race for student president, and like every underdog, Milo seeks to gain the votes of the unpopular kids. So Milo rallies the drama geeks, the FFA, and even the albinos for the Lord Club. As election day arrives, Milo couldn't even get two words into his speech before Debbie steals the spotlight from him. When all hope seems lost, all the unpopular kids rally together, casting so many votes that the ballot box could hardly contain them. And to no surprise to anyone, the winner by a massive landslide is... Debbie. Or she would have been had she not gotten knocked over into a wood chipper. So technically Milo won by default. Several months pass after Debbie's funeral and her father still seems very distraught. When Bob offers emotional support, Debbie's father takes the opportunity and invites Bob over to his house to discuss something important. We learn that Debbie is alive, but they faked her death due to how ugly she's become. They treat her like she's become a monster, and they want her to stay at the Oblong's house. While Debbie has changed in appearance, her personality remained the same. Which is a good point about how appearances don't change who you are on the inside, and the episode only gets deeper into the topic from here. Obviously, Debbie can't stand to live at the Oblong house, so she runs off to be with her friends, who are all repulsed at her appearance. As you no doubt know by now, all of Debbie's friends look the exact same, and to top on this, they are all named Debbie. It took me years to realize the social commentary of this show, and that commentary is why I wanted to revisit it. One thing I didn't realize about this show is how drastically different the people from the valley and the people from the hills were. The people from the hills are very generic characters. They all have very bland personalities, no unique characteristics, and most of them look and think the exact same. The people from the valley all have unique personalities and characteristics. They all look interesting and have different points of view. This gets even more interesting as Debbie still remains the exact same character even after being disfigured, showing that one's appearance doesn't dictate who they are, but rather more complex circumstances such as the social environment one is raised in do factor in the outcomes of one's personality. A lot of shows have tried tackling that message, but none have done it better than The Oblongs. Not to mention, The Oblongs has some nice dark comedy to help those messages. Speaking of which, Debbie's about to jump off a bridge as she can't live looking so deformed. And this leads to my favorite joke in the entire show. However, I'm not going to show it in this review, as I don't want to ruin it by chopping it into bits so that YouTube won't copyright strike the video. Anywho, after what happened there, Milo talks to Debbie assuring her that she is in a place where people accept her for who she is, not by how she looks. Though that soon gets tested as Debbie starts to force her ideals onto everyone else. In no time at all, they decide that they want to get rid of her, so they take her to their school nurse who manages to completely repair her face. Debbie returns to her old life, and that's kind of it. The first half of this episode started off real good, though the second half lacks in a lot of aspects. What they did to Debbie was a neat idea, but it doesn't really lead to anything. While I like the idea of Debbie staying herself even after the accident, 
Her bland personality just isn't that interesting to focus on for 12 minutes. One of this show's strong points is its characters, at least the characters from the valley. But once the school election is over, the show gets rid of the side characters and focuses mostly on Debbie. While I think this episode is one of the best examples of this show tackling social commentary, it does fall flat in other places. As for the rest of the series, it's fantastic. I recommend checking this show out if you haven't already, and even if you have seen it, I recommend re-watching it as it still holds up fantastically. Anyways, thanks for watching this review, be sure to subscribe to help support future content on this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.